Hey, hello, thank you for joining me. This is a totally different type of video. My one year on YouTube, I'm going to attempt, give it my best effort to create one of those videos for you guys so you can see how this channel has grown and hopefully it will be interesting. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jess. I've built multiple six and seven figure Etsy stores in various niches getting sales like these and learning the ins and outs of Etsy, Amazon, and more. A wild and crazy event led me to start a totally new life traveling abroad, giving me the unique opportunity to step back, work a lot less, and start sharing all of my Etsy insights with you. So hit that subscribe button, grab a pen of paper, and let's jump in. I am super, super excited and super, super thankful for everyone who has subscribed to my channel so far. Um, I honestly had no idea when I started making these videos one year ago if anyone was going to sit through my videos and watch them or not, or if I was just going to be really boring and um, annoying to watch. So I'm really, really thankful that it has grown the way that it has and that all of you guys have supported me on this journey this year. So thank you very much. If you don't know my channel yet, if you're stumbling on this just for watching about the YouTube growth portion, my niche is talking about selling on Etsy. It is a pretty specific niche. So one of the things that I have learned this last year is that it's not the biggest niche in terms of growth opportunities. It's pretty specific and it's pretty limited in terms of potential audience size. But I chose that particular niche because I know a lot about it. I've been selling on Etsy since like 2009-ish, and it's been a journey. I've had several successful Etsy stores throughout the last decade and a half or so, and um, it's just something that I could talk about a lot and really in depth, so that's the niche that I happen to choose. I've also had stores do really well from Amazon and Shopify, but my heart is kind of with Etsy. So when it came down to picking a topic, Etsy was in it for the win. <laughs> so that is something that I wanted to point out just in case you're watching this because you want to start a YouTube channel. Definitely consider not only what you have expertise in or what you could talk about endlessly without getting bored of yourself, but also consider your potential audience size as well. We're going to talk about how my channel has grown. To do that, I'm going to switch over to my Etsy, not my Etsy, to my YouTube dashboard, and we are going to check it out. Okay, so as of this current moment in time, I have 5,302 subscribers. I launched my very first video on December 1st of 2022, so exactly one year ago today. And of course, I started with zero subscribers. And I think I approached my channel a little bit differently than a lot of other people because I did not have an audience base to start out with. I didn't have um, a blog or a website or social media profiles or any of those things before having this channel. And I actually didn't tell anybody what I was doing. Nobody outside of my house knew what I was working on. And when it finally consumed such a big part of my daily life that I felt like I needed to actually tell some of my very closest friends, I told them what I was doing, but I didn't tell them my channel name. I didn't tell them anything specific so they could not actually go watch my videos. And I did that very intentionally because I wanted my channel to grow 100% organically. So up until this point of filming today's video, I have not used any sort of ads. I did not start social media channels until after I got monetized. So I wasn't advertising my channel videos on uh, anything on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Instagram, nowhere until after I got monetized. So up until that point, it was 100% organic based on the YouTube algorithm alone. And I think that helped a lot in terms of trajectory. So let's take a look at my actual analytics. Okay, so first let's take a look at some of my stats and my kind of my growth trajectory here. And then I'll tell you some of the things that I learned and, and what I had to do to kind of make this a profitable channel that, that was outside of the ads. So let's take a look first at what I did when I first launched my channel. So if we go to December 1st here, I started actually filming my content, kind of planning it out and scheduling 
in my head how I wanted everything to go, I think around mid-October. And I already had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted my videos to involve, what I wanted them to contain, and, um, you know, the, the, the information I wanted to cover in my videos. So that made it a little bit easier for me in terms of outlining my videos because I already had a pretty clear idea. I wasn't exploring different topics. I wasn't kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what my audience wanted. I knew what I wanted to, to post about and I kind of rolled with that vision. So on between like mid-October up until December 1st, I was working like a crazy person to make 30 videos. And I think I actually ran out of time and only ended up making about 26 videos total. But my plan was to have um, five videos that I could launch on that first day. So on December 1st, and then I launched a video every single day for two weeks. After that, I dropped down to a three times a week schedule. And if we look here at my stats, you can see I posted five videos the first day and then one. It says I published two on December 3rd, but one of them was actually a little promo video for a workbook I had made. So that doesn't count really. And then I just continued to post. And I, because I was short on the 30 videos, I actually only had, I believe, 11, 11 days of posting every single day as opposed to the whole two weeks. If I was going to do it again, while this looks great and it looks like I really popped off and that's mostly thanks to one video that did really well, I think it was this one here. Um, I would not do that again. I would not post every other, every single day. I do, I would post five videos that first day just so that my audience who stumbles upon my videos would have other videos to kind of check out and explore of mine and know, um, kind of what my channel was about and what to expect if they subscribe. But whatever publishing schedule you plan to stick with, like permanently, that's probably what you want to roll with right off the bat. And I didn't know that at the time. And I did do a lot of research and the research seemed to kind of support posting every day for a couple of weeks to kind of get things going and get things moving. And while that worked, you can see here that it immediately dipped when I started um, posting three times a week. So it was nice to give me a little bit of a boost, but I do feel like I got penalized a bit when I dropped down my frequency of posting and I wonder sometimes if I'd have just stuck to a set schedule from the get-go if that would have happened or if my trajectory would have been more stable. So that is something that I wanted to point out and that was something that I really noticed about December is I dropped back down, well I didn't drop back down, I dropped down from that every day for the first 11 days two, three times a week, and my stats definitely took a hit. <laughs> However, it was still going well in terms of people liking my videos, and I was growing, and I was very, very excited. And if we look at kind of how the first few months went here, okay, so if we look at this on more of a three-month trajectory, so from December 1st to February 28th, you can see here that here's that big spike that I got from posting every day. And then it kind of drops down and you can see what seems to be steady but normal views. It's not really like a big pop off, but it does grow a little bit here and there and go up and down quite a bit. But you can also see that I got monetized. So before that three months was over, I was already monetized and making ad dollars. So that was awesome. And I was very, very excited about that. And if we look specifically at February, you can see that I got monetized February 6th-ish, I believe it was the 6th, and started making money in ads literally that next day. So within 24 hours, I already had a dollar in revenue. And if you're wondering if I'm a millionaire, now that I have 5,000 subs, I am sad to report that I am not, I have not made a ton of money on ad revenue, but we are going to look at what I did make overall. So if we look at kind of the first year, so you can see 
Nope, I'm on the monetization. You can see my growth kind of all over the place. And I've read a lot about people, other YouTubers saying that some videos do great and they don't know why, and some videos do awful and they don't know why. I can usually pinpoint for the most part why a video does awful, but I can't always pinpoint when something does great. So there are sometimes pleasant surprises when a video does really, really well. And one thing that I have learned is if I think a video is going to do really, really well, it's probably not. <laughs> and I don't know if that's unique to me or if that's just how the YouTube world works. But if I'm confident that a video is going to be great and I'm like, yeah, everyone's going to watch this. This is going to be the one that goes viral. No, it, it's not. It's going to be disappointing. And I'm going to see that it's ranked 8 out of 10 of my last videos. And I'm going to be upset. And then I have to go into my phone and lock myself out of the YouTube app so I can't check it obsessively. And <laughs> it's a whole thing. So it's really interesting. I think the important thing is to, you know, have your plan, have your content ideas, and really stick to yourself and stay true to what you want to post about. Um, obviously you have to follow the audience if they're all watching a certain type of video and they're watching less of another type of video, you want to go with the topics that seem to be more, um, interesting to your audience, of course, but you can't really stress yourself out if certain videos are doing bad or necessarily try to hype yourself up in advance to think that a video is going to do good. So that's something that I've learned kind of more for my mental well-being than anything else. In terms of my trajectory, you can kind of see it growing slowly here. And there's a lot of reasons for ups and downs. And a lot of those reasons are my own fault. So for example, my channel was doing really great. I monetized in February, the beginning of February. And then in the beginning of April, I had this great idea to create a membership group and I was going to provide exclusive content just for that group. I started making extra videos for them and at the same time to accommodate for that extra work I stopped posting three times a week and I started posting twice a week instead which the YouTube algorithm did not love and they didn't care that I was still posting once a week in my membership group. I didn't even make it through the first month, I believe, before I actually had a major health issue. And I have a heart condition called SCAD, Spontaneous Coronary Artery Dissection. And that's either because of or in conjunction with some autoimmune disorders that I have. So um, it's a pretty serious heart condition that is highly fatal. So long story short, I had a heart attack in the end of April, and I immediately had to cut my workload significantly, and that was kind of the end of the membership group. So um, the people who had already joined within that first month were really understanding and really sweet about the whole thing, and I refunded everyone their money. So if we look at the revenue here, you can see that I'm bringing in a little bit of money, and on average, I'm bringing in, you know, maybe four or five bucks a day. And then there's a negative here. And that's because I had people signing up for my group. And then when I canceled the group after one month, <laughs> um, I had to refund everybody who had paid for that first month. So that was a bad lesson learned. And I would probably have done that differently if I had known in advance that that would happen. So anyways, it also ties into learning that um, YouTube does reward consistency. And every time that I have dropped my posting down, I've had a little bit of a struggle in the algorithm for a while after that. So if you can see here, a lot of these months, a lot of these weeks, excuse me, have three to four videos posted. And then as my channel grew and the workload involved in my channel kind of started to pick up as well, I dropped my videos down to once a week. And I expected to take a huge hit in terms of views and everything, but I think I was able to actually put more focus into the content and make the videos more informative to my audience. So it actually started really growing. And you can see here, even though I'm only making one video a week, it really did start to grow. And you can see some days here 
were $25 days, which was great. And so in this whole one year period, I feel like I'm dragging this video out really long here. In this whole one year period, I have gained 244,000 views. That's 24,700 something watch hours. 5,303 subscribers, and I have made a grand total of $1,839 from YouTube ads through this entire period of one year on YouTube. So I'm not rich. I can't buy a mansion, but it is growing, and I'm super optimistic to see where it grows from here. And I did see in a different YouTube video when I was kind of looking at this whole one year review and seeing that a lot of YouTubers kind of do this uh, little rite of passage video, I did see that there's a little trick that a lot of YouTubers tend to use to really clickbait you into watching their video and to making it look like if you follow their advice, you're gonna get rich on YouTube. And I wanna show you that trick. So if you go to settings, and you change the currency, I believe, to the Namibian dollar here, it suddenly looks like I have made a ton of money on YouTube ads. And honestly, if I made $34,400 on YouTube ads my first year, I would be super, super stoked, like buying a new car levels of excitement here. But that is a trick that I've seen. And thank you to the YouTuber who showed that before. And I will try and look up your name so I can credit you in the description. But that was just crazy to stumble upon that. And it really made so much sense when I saw him do that. So if you didn't see his videos and you're watching mine, I wanted to point that out as well. Spreading the word, doing a little bit of, little bit of social justice one thing at a time, I guess. So another thing that I wanted to talk about briefly is that YouTube ads is not the only way to monetize your YouTube channel. And I know you can find a ton of different videos on this topic on YouTube already, so I'm not gonna go too in depth about it. But what I did before I launched my channel, so before December 1st, when I was in that planning phase, is I started a Buy Me A Coffee page. And I actually, if I jump over to it here, I started making uh, digital downloads and things that I could offer to my audience that helped them sell on Etsy. So very related to my content and my niche. And I give most of them away for free. And I have, that is so big. I have them to where they can actually get all of them in one quick click for two bucks, super basic. And this was for the most part ready to roll. I always add um, extras over time. So it started out with like six or seven maybe freebies and it has grown steadily throughout this past year. But this gave me a way to offer my audience something of value and incentivize them really to continue watching my content and to continue to subscribe and to like and to um, wanna follow as I continue to make new videos because I'm giving them things that they can actually use and that they can learn from beyond just my regular videos. And the great thing about Buy Me A Coffee is that people were actually giving me money for these things. So even though they were free, they can enter a price in here and they can give me a dollar or they can give me $5. I've even had somebody give me $20 for a freebie before, which is so cool. And um, in addition, they can also do the buy me a coffee and just donate money directly to your channel like this. So that was a really, really valuable way to get money, a little bit of money coming in the door right off the bat, even before my channel was monetized. So I did want to really specify that. And if that's something that you're able to do for your particular niche, you know, start thinking about different things that you can offer them. They don't have to be super fancy. Um, just something that teaches them something or provides them some sort of value and they can download that from buy me a coffee and you can start to get a little bit of uh, income coming in a lot faster than however long it may take you to get monetized. So that was really, really valuable. Um, I did also launch just a couple weeks ago my big huge workbook and SEO planning strategy set 
that is hosted independently of Buy Me A Coffee, and that also helps to bring in some money to help support the channel. Especially as the channel grows, your costs start to grow as well. There's things that I need now that I didn't necessarily need when I was a beginner. Um, better equipment, better editing software, um, you know, subscriptions to send my newsletters out with like Flowdesk and things like that. And those things cost money each month. So having these things in place for monetization will really help you as you grow because you're going to need those many of those same things as well. So that's it. I just wanted to kind of walk through how things went for me this past year and also show you kind of the things that I did to get monetized and to grow um, my income source outside of getting monetized. So that's the basic takeaway. And in addition to these monetization, buy me a coffee kinds of things, workbook things, I also did pick up a couple of sponsors and I'm actually in talks with a couple more sponsors, which is super, super exciting. And I'm not going to go into really a lot of detail on that because I think sponsorships are really, um, specific to your niche and to what you're talking about and to your potential audience needs. But I am really particular about trying to only sponsor or even affiliate. You can also affiliate, get affiliate um, commissions for things that you use and that you support and that you recommend to your audience. So that's another monetization stream as well. But I'm really picky that if I wouldn't actually use it, I also won't recommend it to my audience because I don't think that's going to get me anywhere in the long term if I just recommend them a bunch of junk that they may not necessarily need or get any value out of. So um, that is something to consider as well when you're looking for potential uh, companies to be affiliates for or to have sponsor you. Make sure that they align with your audience and with your content really well because that's going to um, not only benefit you in terms of providing value to your audience, but it's also going to help you get more commission because if you're recommending something that they don't really need or they don't really want, they're not going to go sign up for it and you're not going to get an affiliate commission anyways. So it's really important to make sure that everything stays aligned with your vision and your content and what your audience actually wants and needs. If you are interested in learning how to build a passive or semi-passive income with selling on Etsy, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, like this video if you felt like it provided any value to you at all, and comment below if you want to know anything more specific than what I went over in this video. Until next time, I will catch you in the next video.